Yo, what is up guys? It's Accept here. Welcome back to another video. I'm sorry, first of all, that there has been a lack of content the last couple of days. I've been a bit tired and not really super motivated for League of Legends. Um, content will return. I'm not quitting. Don't worry about that. It's just I don't want to burn myself out by doing something I'm not feeling. So, alright. Either way, today we're doing patch 14.19 rundown. So, this is a pretty big patch. I didn't do one for the last one. Basically, TLDR for the last one. Um, bruisers are really good in jungle. AP mages are back. Um, yeah, that's main thing. Six MF got nerfed, but they're still decent. Ash and Barris are really strong. Um, yeah. All right. So if you want the TLDR for this patch, because this is a big one, then I would suggest you go to the pretty much the last part of the video, um, or the last maybe two minutes, one minute, something like that. Um, I'm not gonna be a dickhead and just keep you all waiting if that's all you want. Um, but I haven't read all the changes, so I don't want to give you a TLDR uh, without me knowing. All right, but basically, Vladimir is getting nerfed. Adjusted the lease, Kizante and Tristana, and then there's a bunch of system changes, mainly some runes, and then pretty much every single item in the in the game. So let's get into it. All right, ultimate spellbook. Uh, okay, I don't care about that. So first things first, they've removed the ward experience. Um, yeah, not much to say about it, to be honest. Um, yeah, I don't see why. But if anything, it just means you can't get level 2 on the first wave. Yeah, there's much else to it. Uh, or not much else to it. Alright, Elise. Passive Spiderlings now always region when we summon on and jump on Q cause. Human E now reveals stealthed units and can now be directed via flash. Spider E buff now applies on cause. It can be recast and immediately drop back in. Our cooldown decreased. Alright. So they regenerate the full health when resummoned. All right, Spiderlings jump on Q spell cost rather than waiting for Elise to land on their target. Okay, this doesn't do that much, but it's all right. Um, targets revealed for a short duration while Elise gets to them. Um, now reveal stealth units and shares its duration with stun cooldown. Okay, you can now flash during the... This is a big change. This is the biggest change that you can E-flash on Elise. It actually is a change I could bring her back to the meta potentially. Uh, repel buff is now always applied after descending. All right. After one second in the air, at least can recast E or target the ground to immediately look back at her location. So she can do it a bit sooner. All right. That's, I mean, overall pretty decent changes for Elise. I don't think it's going to be in, she's like super OP. As I said, I think bruisers are really good right now from last patch. Spoiler alert for the item changes. I think tanks are going to be very good. Um, and so I don't think Elise is going to like love her life in that sense, because also AP mids are quite good. But I mean, especially in solo queue, this could bring the champion back a bit. All right, Kaysante. Now Kaysante, Kaysante is getting reworked again. Bro, this guy's matching Rice at this point in a lot of reworks, bro. And he's been out for two years. Um, all right, so all ability, <laughs> all ability suggested. Base attack range reduced. All right, ball at 25. Um... Oh shit, there's so much. Um, so, I'm not gonna read through every single change because there's way too much. Um, so, I'm gonna give a quick TLDR from what I've seen. His flame phase is slightly stronger. Slightly stronger. Not so, like a lot stronger. He struggles a bit more versus ranged champions though. So, like Gnar, Bane, um, Smolder, etc. are a bit worse for him than they were before um, when it comes to lane. Uh, his Q. No longer resets when he casts his ult. So, meaning that if he decides to cast his ult while he has Q3, well, then he would no longer lose his Q3. Um, he doesn't deal true damage anymore, but he does have armor pen, etc. now instead. Um, the W, um, quick, pretty big change, can no longer be redirected after it gets casted. So what I mean by this is that if you cast your W forward, you're going forward no matter what. You can't go backwards like you could before and change the direction of it. Um, so now you have to be a lot more careful about where you actually place your W. That's like one thing. But your cooldown is down by a lot as well on this ability and your minimum cost time as well. So this means that you can actually use your W a bit more in trades. For example, me and Butchie, a top laner, um, well, a near level one top laner, uh, was playing one once earlier today um, on tier 99, testing this out. And for example, in Renekton matchup, it means he can pretty much always W on the Renekton E. In the Jax matchup, for example, he can always W on the Jax QE. Um, these kind of things, right? 
Um, so it means he has some outplay potential, but if he ever misuses his W and goes in the wrong direction, that means he's going to be pretty screwed over. Um, his E um, can no longer go or waltz when he's all out. Um, and it doesn't reset his basic attack anymore. That's like two pretty big changes. And also it does increase the range when in all out, but it does have, well, still less increased range towards allies. Um, but it has some reduced cooldown while in all out. Um, and the all out itself... Um, well, it has armor pen, as I said, it has some omnivamp. It doesn't grant attack damage, um, based off of your bonus resistances anymore, and doesn't grant healing um, damage to champion. Um, it can't be reactivated to end early, like before. Um, and yeah, this is just a bug fix, basically. But it has some other benefits, like um, increasing attack speed, etc. Now, my take with Kisante is that, as I said, spoiler alert, I think tanks are going to be pretty strong from what I've seen with the item changes, but we could see this soon. Um, Kisante is a champion that's a tank, if you didn't know. Um, he's a lot of things, but he's a tank, is one of them. Um, and he's also good into tanks. So I think Kisante could be strong, but I think he, once again, has a bit of a learning curve. Maybe he's not a blind pick, uh, potentially, because I think there's some range matchups, as I said, Vayne, Nar, Smolder, uh, Nidali, potentially, these kind of champions are quite rough for him. Um, it's hard to say how strong this champion is. Also, he now queues or slows on Q again in ult, but yeah. Um, it's hard to say how strong he is, but I think he's alright. Um, I don't think he's going to suffer too much. I think he's going to be more of a counter pick potentially, and a neutralizing pick, and an actual tank in lane. Um, another thing that this champion does is that he scales a bit faster now than before, but his scaling is less powerful when he actually gets to it. Alright, either way, Trisona. Once again, a lot of changes. So her attack range is buffed, her AD is buffed, her AD growth is nerfed. Um, yeah, there's a lot of stuff you can read through it if you want to and pause it here. Um, basically, she has a bit more range. Um, she has more attack speed on her Q. Um, her slow on W is a bit nerfed, but the slow duration is up by a lot and the damage is down by a bit, right? So um, overall, this is pretty even in that sense on the W, right? Um, the dub, the increased range on passive is down by a bit, but it doesn't matter too much, um, because you get more base range. Uh, yeah, and then the E has a lot of changes as well. Um, let me just read through this so I'm not lying to you guys. Yeah, the main thing with this here, active damage and passive explosion damage, is that we see is that the base damage is down by a bit, but the bonus AD ratio is up by quite a bit. Um, at least in the early game, right? Um, and the damage is multiplied by critical, based on critical strike modifier for 3% more damage as 100% crit chance damage is multiplied on critical strike chance and critical strike damage. Um, yeah. So basically, like, what they're trying to do is make Tristana, at least what I think they're trying to do, they probably talk about it a bit here. Um, first we want to buff her as Tristana, yeah, that's true. We want to make it stream. Yeah, exactly. I was going to say, I think they want to make her more of a bot laner because now she's less powerful than just the flat out 1v1. She gets some more buffs for bot lane, for example, the range, which is quite nice for her, but less all in power with her W, for example, and her E. Um, so yeah, she's a bit, they're trying to make her a bit more of a bot laner, which I think overall is going to balance her champion more, but we'll see how that goes. Also, her ult has a stun now, so that's something to keep in mind of. Um, yeah, W on a Vladimir. Um, well, it has been nerfed, basically, the W max build. Um, thank God for that, because it's a very obnoxious build. I don't think it's, like, very strong, and, well, yeah, as it's note here, his win rate has actually decreased, but with that being said, I don't think that's because maybe Vladimir is weaker than he was before. I think it's because more people are trying to play Vladimir, um, and not everyone knows how to play him, and then, well, the Vladimir won tricks... We're good at him, you know, so they're gonna have good win rate, and no one else played him before, and now everyone's playing him, which means he's gonna have lower win rate. Um, but yeah, either way, all right, items. Items is like the main thing that is getting changed this patch. So we can see here most legendary items have between, um, broadly nerfed most legendary items here between 5 and 12 percent of their total power, right? So a lot of items are getting nerfed, all right, dagger. Total cost is down. This is quite good, actually. The double dagger start the London opening. Okay, crazy. Uh, um, anyways, fairy charm is down by 50. Sapphire crystal. Everything's... All the components actually seem to be getting a bit buffed. Except for maybe large shot here. This sucks a bit, but that's fine. 
Um, but yeah, all of these are getting a bit buffed. So, I mean, any champion that builds those items early are going to be quite happy. But these are quite strange items in that sense. Maybe Sapphire Crystal could have interesting starts now. Going Sapphire Crystal with like triple or quadruple pot potentially on some mages. I'm not sure. Um, yeah. Hex Drinker, Magic Resist is down by 5. Total cost of Coal Fields is down by 50. Scout Slingshot is down by 200. That's a lot of gold changed actually. That's a crazy amount of gold. Um, Heartbound Axe is down by 100. Noon Quiver builds no longer from Double Longsword, Cloak of Agility, but now One Longsword and Cloak of Agility, but a bit more total, like combined costs, and the AD is down by 5, gold down by 100. Um, Rectrix is down attack damage by 5, 125, I think this is, adds up to being... Uh, yeah, it's still not worth it for like Rectrix to lose 5 AD for this. This is still not the gold value that you're getting, but it's alright since they're nerfing every single item, I guess. Um, Seal getting quite a big hit here, 100 gold and losing 1% movement speed. Movement speed is one. Now people have started realizing finally that movement speed is one of the most OP stats in the game. Um, so this does a lot. Um, even if you might think it doesn't. Um, Oblivion Orb nerfed by 5 AP. Um, Aver Wisp up by 50, Movement Seed is the same thing as the Seal, it's a bit less of a gold nerf though. Um, it's hard to say what these do on the components, like, because most of these components are like, oh well they're stat sticks, right? I can tell you that the Seal nerf is decent, but, well, every nerf is getting like, or every item is getting nerfed, right, so it's hard to say. Um, this is important to note, Wing Moon Plate getting buffed 50 HP, Movement Speed down by 1, so this is going plus minus 0. Same thing here, Glacial Buckler getting buffed, um, Warden's Mail here, um, Rock Solid, this is getting buffed in the early game, right? Because you're not going to have 2k HP or like, not even, you need more than that for that matter, like uh, 3k HP um, to get the 15 value here, so... But it only affects some champion damage, which makes sense. I don't know why I didn't do that before, but yeah. Forge damage buffed. So you can see a lot of tanks. I tank items are getting buffed. This is why I'm saying I think it's gonna be a tank meta. Um immolate damage. Um less some bonus HP, but more flat. Uh, more minion monster damage bonus. So this is quite nice, especially for uh, especially for junglers. Um yeah, tank younglers like Sejani, Maokai, they could go Baumis and just sit on the Baumis if they want to. The health is down by a bit, but that's alright. Um, this is also nice on champions in top lane that want to build Baumis early on, but lack wave clear otherwise. So, for example, Rek'Sai um, is one. Of course, not everyone plays Rek'Sai, and I understand that, but like, for example, Orn, if you don't want to use as much mana on the wave, these kind of things, right? Or like, just any general tank. Um, this is a decent buff for um, Negatron Cloak is down by 50 gold, but 5 MR is fine, because you don't need 50 MR that early on in the game anyways, usually, and later on it's, you're gonna be fine, you're gonna be fine. Uh, Spectre Skull up by 10 MR, this is crazy amount, actually, just to give out like that. Band Glass Mirror is down 100 gold in the cost, Mounted Region is up as well, so this is quite a decent buff, and Forbidden Lidl is buff. So, what you see here is that, at least so far, a lot of enchanter components are getting buffed and tank components are getting buffed. Um, yeah, which means that, well, tank younglers, tank top laners, gonna probably quite be quite strong compared to the CC support meta that we've been having recently, like or basically the entire year. And instead, enchanters might creep back up into the into meta or potentially into like mid lane play or top lane play, and you still play like tank spot lane. I'm not sure. All right. Now, let's see here. Completed items. Fighter items. We rebalance fighter items with three classes in mind skirmishes who need them to be highly lethal and require finesse to succeed, to find success. Divers who need to get through the front line to access their weaker targets and juggernauts who should be tanky enough to hit whoever's front in them. Alright. Um, Witsend getting nerfed 5 attack speed, 5 MR, and only damage is completely gutted. I'll be completely honest. This is the craziest change I've seen in a while. I think right now what's scaling on Witsend is that it goes from level 9 to level 18. That's when it starts increasing. So if you build it as first item, well, technically it's fine. But you're never building Witsend as a first item. This item is already very, very weak on like every champion that is not NAR into like 50 mil, uh, like 50 CC champions or like any champion that really likes attack speed versus a lot of melee CC champions uh, that also have a lot of magic damage. So yeah, I don't know. I need to charge my headset. I just realized I unplugged it. Um, no, so my thought process at least is that um, yeah, this item already to me is quite bad. 
Now, they are nerfing every other item in the game, so it's not like a massive nerf, but this on hit damage nerf is quite big. Um, Eclipse, 100 gold up, um, 10 AD, this is quite a lot. This is ish 450 gold value, so yeah. Um, total cost on Chainsword or Shenfunk Chainsword is up by 300. Recipe, Execution is Calling, Ruby, Crystal. It's gonna be Giant Spelt instead and a Coalfields Hammer instead of Ruby Crystal. It's still gonna cost 500 gold. Health is up by 200. Um, and attack damage is down. So, yeah, this is just getting nerfed ish 300 gold, I would say. Um, that's just a nerf. This is alright considering. Um, Experimental Hexplate, this item is terrible, never buy it, um, unless it's getting a nerf here, or a buff here, I mean, but I doubt it, <laughs> I doubted this, you know. Uh, Tunnel of Heartbound Axe, uh, now it's gonna be Phage instead, the only uh, champion you could maybe build this on is like, Olaf or Nocturne, but even then, uh, nah, it's just not a good item, is it? Um, attack damage down by 15, attack speed down by 5, yeah, don't build this item, please. Terrible item. Um, Holebreaker. A lot of changes. They're mainly focused on making it a tankier item that appeals to fighters who want to convert their health pools into damage with clearly better single target damage than Titanic Hydra. This is interesting. This could be... Well, if you're a Nidalee player and you watch me, like Nidalee top lane player, because I assume some of you are, um, this could be an interesting item choice for like AD Nida for sure. This is something I build sometimes, not that often, but I don't think it's that bad. It's just worse than Titanic Hydra, but this could be interesting. Um, either way, Recipe Tunneler Rectrix Pickaxe is now going to be Winged Moonplate instead of the Rectrix, um, and 100 gold more. Attack damage is nerfed by 25, which is quite a lot. Health is up by 150. Movement speed is down by 4. Melee on hit damage is down on the off the base AD, but off the max, but up on the max HP. So maybe not on Nidalee. It's maybe not the the best champion to say this on. I wouldn't say. Um, ranged on it damage though is up on the base AD, so maybe. We usually would go melee form either way. Uh, melee on it structure damage, same thing. Um, yeah, so they're just buffing it for people that use HP mainly or max HP, and not AD, or nerfing it for melee that use AD. Uh, melee bonus, cannon, super blah, 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 blah. This is a decent amount. I guess it's from level 1, we're well, level 8 to 18 instead of 1 to 18 though, so. I mean, overall, they, this item remains kind of the same and has the same purposes right now. Um, potentially, it could be interesting on tanks, I would say. Maybe not Nidalee, um, but like Scion could be interesting. Rek'Sai could be interesting. Um... Any tank that builds a lot of HP and cares about AD, like uh, Skarner, potentially could be interesting. Um, Urgot, of course, Holebreaker is always going to be interesting on. Um, yeah, basically any champion that's going to have a lot of max HP and care about AD. So Scion especially is what I'm thinking about. Alright, Cleaver. Um, nerfed by 15 AD, basically, and build buff is updated. Um, yeah, considering they're buffing tank items or not nerfing tank items that hard, this seems crazy to me. Um, 1580 is a lot, because especially because a lot of the time you want to build Cleaver as a first item on like champions like Renekton, let's say, Nar, not Nar, uh, Ren Renekton, um, what are the champions build Cleaver for? Is, is it only Renekton that builds his first item? No, it can't be. I mean, there's for sure some champion I'm forgetting about, um, but anyways, so let's say champions like Renekton, um, that want to build it into like Kisanta first item, for example, um, this is a huge nerf for um, Attack damage nerfed by 10 on Ma. Um, shield is down as well. Um, yeah, it just seems like a solid nerf. Um, 10 AD on Shodian. Haste is down to zero. They updated the recipe path as well. The health is up. A basic ability haste. So this is interesting. I mean, it's a nerf. It's not a massive nerf, I would say. But it depends on the champion you're playing for sure. But yeah, this seems decently big, especially on champions that care about old cooldown. If you don't care about old cooldown, it doesn't matter too much. But I mean, still, you're losing 10 basic abilities as well, which is not great, right? All right. Uh, Sunder Sky recipe updated as well. They're updating a lot of recipes. I'm not sure this is necessary, but um, let's write games for you. Um, yeah. Uh, attack damage is down by 5. Haste is down by 5. Health is down by 50. And the healing is down by... 20% base AD. This item is still fine, I think. 
yeah, I think it's still fine. This is probably so far out of bruiser items. I would say the item that gets the least nerfed, except for maybe Shane Punk Shame or Shane Punk Shane Sword. I would say Sunish guy is still fine. Uh, Blade of Rune King 10 AD. That's alright. Um, I don't think Blade of Rune King is a good item, but either way, it's like not that big of a nerf. 100 gold of death stance also is like not that big of a nerf. Um, Sturex Gauge. 45% base AD. It's still Sturx is still a good item for the sake of it gives you tenacity, and tenacity is hard to come by right now. You either have to well, you have three ways of getting tenacity basically, except for going into your rune shard, which no one ever does. You can go with scent, you can go Sturx, and you can go Merc Threats. So Merc Threats is a pretty solid. With scent you don't want to buy, so Sturx all of a sudden becomes a pretty good item. Um, because tenacity is one of the most important stats in the game, uh, especially with how much easy there is in the game at the moment. Um, this item is still going to be good. Um, and a pretty good second option on a lot of champions. Uh, Strikebreaker. Uh, attack damage down by 20. Attack speed down by 5. Remove the temper. Sorry? Could it tell me? Wait, Strikebreaker. I really wish... I, I, I don't memorize what the name is for like certain passive temper. Dealing physical damage grants you boom, bonus movement speed. Uh, I mean, that sucks, but at least you have the movement speed still on the active, right? So, I mean, this item is going to be fine. I think Strybreaker is a really good item at the moment, so it's just going to be less good, but it's still going to be good, I think, like, or all right. Uh, Revenous Hydra, down by 580. Abilities, down by 5. Crescent damage is, well, 20% less AD scaling, and life still effective. I mean, it's still all right item, like, yeah, it's a side lane item, and it's still going to be all right on the side lane, so. Um, Titanic Hydra. Update the build path instead of uh, just Ruby Crystal. It's now Giant Spelt instead. So this is a bit of a nice, nicer build path, actually. Um, health or attack damage is down by 10. Um, health is up by 50. And on cleave on damage is down by 0. 0.5. Cle cleave on hit damage. Let me double check this. Because I think that should be... Like, this should be just a cone that comes out of your auto attacks, right? Yeah, exactly. So it's just a basic attack and not the active. This item is still fine. This is still a decent item. Uh, Olor's Blood Mail down by 10 AD and up by 50. Yeah, this is fine. Um, it's still a good late game item on Bruisers. Uh, Triforce 9 AD. No, this is a weird number. I'm not sure. I think this was, must have been a typo. No, there's no way to put it 36 AD. It should be 35. Either way, it doesn't matter that much. 180. Um, ability is down by 5. Attack speed down by 3%. Health is up by... Well, <laughs> right games are such trolls, bro. <laughs> uh, health is up by 33. I mean, yeah, item is still fine. Um, you build it for the Sheen, and champions that want to use Sheen are still gonna buy it. Alright, Phantom Dancer. Uh, well, ADC items now. So here's this first section where some where a meaningful amount of movement speed has been pulled out of the system. Well, GD ADCs. Um, yeah, 50 gold cost of Phantom Dancer doesn't matter too much. 4% movement speed is a lot. 3% uh, movement speed, it's basically the same thing on like every item. Energized damage here as well. Um, like basically what you need to know is that ADCs are getting really nerfed for once. Now, with this being said, if you're an ADC main, don't go crying around or anything like that, please. Um, because while ADC items are getting nerfed, ADC has been the most broken role this entire year. There's been Tristana, Corky, everything in mid lane. You know, you only play ADCs there, you play ADCs top lane, um, you play ADCs, well, bot lane still. Um, ADCs have been really broken. Um, they're getting nerfed, yes, they're still gonna be alright. You're still gonna play them, you're still gonna be fine. It's a tank meta, and tank metas, ADCs don't hate their lives. They just, you play ADCs that actually can shred tanks. Um, and you're gonna be alright. Um, mortal Reminder. Nerf seems to be a bit more than the other items, potentially, I would say. Even though movement speed is not super nice, it's like if you're facing a lot of tanks, it's not like the big, the end of the world. It could, down the line, when they nerf, like... Tank items, buff bruiser items potentially, then it could be a, become a bigger problem for ADC potentially, but we'll see how that goes. Uh, Terminus nerf does seem to be that big. SS Reaver, I mean, decent, but no one builds SS Reaver anyways, kinda, except for Cyan Siver maybe. Um, Kraken Slayer, yeah, it's just the same as everything else. This seem on hit damage seems pretty big. Kraken Slayer seems to be getting hit pretty big. Blade of Rune King we saw earlier. Um, 
collector, quite a big nerf actually, 3400 is uh, an insane amount for an item like this. Collector is an item that is good because you, it allows you to spike really hard really early on, right? That's why the item is good. It gives you lethality, it gives you crit, and it gives you AD. Which means that when you have this item, you're super strong on champions that have a lot of flat damage. For example, like MF, etc. These kind of champions. Um, graves. But this is quite a big nerf. 200 gold means you're going to hit the spike so much later. And 2 lethality is not that much. But it does add up when you don't have that much lethality on item anyways. This seems like a pretty big nerf. Um, June Tolo Wild Arrows. This item is... This item is so, so weak at the moment. Um, bleed damage. 35% of total AD to 70 uh, does this make makes the item strong in the first two item slots while getting rid of some gold scaling that was... Uh, I don't know. You never build this item early on out of it. You're gonna start building it early on now because of this change. This item is still shit. Um, Mercurial Skimitar. Yeah, you're gonna build this for QSS still if you need it. Uh, IE gets a pretty big nerf, but you're still gonna buy it later on because, well, IE is OP. Um, yeah, there's not much else to it. I mean, overall, ADC is getting hit the hardest, I would say, so far, by far. Um, yeah. Alright, AD Assassin items. Haze on Umbral Glaive is down by 5%. Total cost on Humus is down by 100. Um, recipes change. I don't know why they put, didn't put the recipe at the top, like everything else, but that's fine. Out of combat movement speed is down by, tw or just set on 20. This item is still fine. Um, opportunity getting nerfed a bit more. I would say, but the preparation lethality is quite good, especially for champions that build the first item, so it's gonna be fine. Edge of Night, pretty big nerf. Yeah, pretty big nerf. I would say Edge of Night is a nice item because it's cheap and it gives you a passive that's effective, um, but if it's not cheap anymore, it's not that good of an item. Uh, we'll take this item is terrible. Um, on most champions, unless your champion has some really good interaction with it, it's just not a good item. Uh, Cube is still a fine item on or in champions I want to build it, but it's a solo queue item. Um, Axiom Mark. Uh, yeah, I mean the item is still fine. I think like it's like if you're if you're a champion still dresses a lot with Axiom Mark, I think it's still a fine item for sure. Um, Cerilda is mostly returning to its old caster assassin form. It's still assassin's best percent pen option. Okay. Um, total cost is down by 200. The recipe is updated. Ability is buffed. Rancers removed. Bro, this is a huge buff. No? Wait. Cerilda's grudge. Alright, let me see this. Yeah, no, I think it's, uh, I mean, obviously the Ransor in that sense is like not buff, but the, it's more haste, it's a cheaper item, um, and it's one of the few armor pen or like items in the game that in general is not getting there. This seems to be nice for Cyrilla, I would say, because this has been a terrible item all season. Um, Profane Hydra, um, cost down by 10, ability is down by 10, cleave less damage, cleave radius less. Um, yeah, this is just overall a nerf, like pretty big nerf as well for that matter. Um, AB items. Alright. Uh, overall, uh, AD assassins are gonna be fine, I think. Like, I don't think they hate their lives. Um, but they probably hate their lives because, well, tanks are gonna be good, I think. So, well, either way, let's see. Um, <laughs> Morello Nomicon, um, Oblivion European, blah, blah, blah. So, recipe is updated. <laughs> this is, what is this, bro? So Morello Nomicon is like a weird item because Morello Nomicon in a lot of like splits or years have been a, like a bad item. And this split was actually a decent item because for not that much you could get a decent amount of ability power, some ability haste and a decent passive, right? Um, so it allowed you to spike pretty hard if you wanted to build it, you know? Um, but 750 gold increase and you remove 15 AP to gi give... I don't know, this is terrible terrible item now. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not even gonna lie, it's just a terrible item. Unless your champion synergizes a lot with getting the health for some reason, and the AP, like, instead of the AP, then I don't see how this is ever not just the biggest nerf that we've seen so far on the list. Um, Rod of Ages. Ability power per minute. Um, so overall this 10 AP less when it's fully stacked. And health per minute this is gonna be 100 AP, or 100 less. Item is still gonna be fine, for sure. 
Rod of Ages, when it, you do get it stacked, is still like a, overall a decent item. The problem is that the item is slow, but it's not going to be slower early on. It's just going to do less when it's actually stacked, which means the item is going to be fine. You're, you're alright. Uh, ability power on this Rhylize is down by 10. Um, yeah, Hexic Protobelt ability power is down by 10. Health is down by 50. Um, Malignance low key is getting buffed. Yeah, I don't know why. I mean, 5 AP for to lose 10 haste is not like the biggest buff, that's not what I'm saying. Um, but it's overall decent, because like Malignus is an item that you build on mages that usually want to burst. Um, using the... Like, for example, I'm thinking of Aurora or Annie that want to use their ult to spam it often and to use the pen they get on the ult right to burst someone, right? So having more AP and less haste, that's all right, you know? Rise and Focus. Replacing Rise and Focus as a clear front runner for non HP ability haste. Oh, I hate this item, bro. I'm the biggest Rise and Focus hater. Uh, if you know me, you know I am. Um, ability power is down by 15 and haste is up by 5. Yeah, I'm still gonna hate the item. And the reason why I hate the item is because I think the passive doesn't do anything, to put it short. Um, if you are curious, then you can leave a comment and I'll explain it a bit more. But I'm not gonna bother you with ranting about why I hate Horizon of Focus as an item. Um, ability power on Blackfire Torch down by 10, 5 ability haste. And the burn is up on the base damage, but down on the AP. So, I mean, as a first item, this is still fine. Um, it scales a bit less though, but that's alright. Um... Triplum, Tenless Ability Power, Life from Death Heal is up on the base. Um, so if you have 200 AP, this the like this is even to what it is right now. And when you get over it, so on your third item-ish. Um, so when you would build Triplum, this is going to be a nerf. So yeah. Uh, but if you do build Triplum second item for some reason, which I don't think you would do, then yeah, it's not going to be a nerf. Um, Luden's Companion is down by 10 abilities. This is alright. Um, Archangel Staff down by 10 AP. Seraph's Embrace down by 10 AP. Um, Lifeline Shield is down by 50. This is completely fine. This is still a decent item. Um, movement Speed down. Summary Speed down. Summary Speed down. Summary speed duration down. Damage is down. I think Storm Search is a bit of an over overhyped item at the moment. Um, a lot of people are building as a second item on a lot of mages, or even first item on Son. I think it's an overrated item. I don't think it's that good. Um, yeah, I don't know what else to say. I think this is one of the bigger nerfs as well on the mage list, I would say. Uh, Nash's Tooth, ability, ability power is down by 10. Um, on it, damage is down by 5% AP. This is still a fine item. Um, 70 AP on Leandris is a lot. It's not like the biggest nerf ever, but it's quite a decent amount, like compared to most other changes we've seen on here. I think this is one of the bigger ones as well. Um, ability power on the Cosmo. Oh, this is a long time. Bro, they've written so much. Who reads this? Come on. Um, <laughs> ability power is down by 10%. Movement speed is down by 1%. Spell lens movement speed is set to 20 for 4 seconds instead of 2 seconds on any magic or true damage on the champion instead of ability damage. So it's a huge nerf, this item. Goodbye, Cosmic Drive. All right. <laughs> uh, Banshee's Veil, one of the gold less. Ability power is down by 15. Medicus is down by 40. This is a huge nerf as well. Um, Lich Bane up by 100. Ability power is buffed, actually. Ability is down. Lich Bane, low key. I mean, 8 to 4% movement speed is a lot, don't get me wrong. But I think of certain champions, like let's say... Um, Akali, Silas, um, champions that dash around a lot already and that actually do use Lich Bane already a lot. This is a decent buff for them, I actually think. Like, I don't make this. I mean, spell laid AP ratio is not great, but 15 AP is not to play around with, I don't think. Like, it's not a buff, don't get me wrong. But compared to the other items that are getting nerfed, I don't think this is getting nerfed nearly as much. Um, so, therefore, I think it's a buff, you know. Riftmaker, 10 AP down. Um, Void Corruption stacks down. I mean, yeah, it's still an alright item, but it sucks. Um, Shadow Flame changes. Shadow Flame is going to be fine. Um, yeah, it's one of the smaller nerfs on the list for sure. It's barely even a nerf. Uh, Sonic's Hourglass 
down by 15, so it's still fine. You don't build it for the AP you get. You build it later on as a defensive item when it's a good game for it. Uh, Rabadons is getting nerfed quite a bit. 10 AP and 5% on the Magical Opus. It's still going to be an item you want to build as either a second or a third item. Don't get me wrong. It's still a good item. Rabadons is a super OP item on mages. But yeah, it's just a nerf to the mage class overall when you touch this kind of item, right? You're still going to build it, but it just means you're not going to pick the mages as much anymore. Um, all right. Tank items. Tank items are overall fairly weak, and as a result, are the least nerfed class of items in this update. Let me think of this. Because I'm not sure I agree tank items are the weakest, you know? Like, bruiser items, um, bruisers in general have been really strong last patch, and before that mages. And the reason for this, though, I don't think are because tank items have been weak. I think this is mainly because they have overbuffed Bruce's last patch, and the patch bef patches before that, AP Youngers were just really OP. But Tank's Youngers have still been getting played during this time. Uh, for example, Tank top laners still get played from time to time. Tank supports have been the only thing getting played. Um, so yeah, I think uh, saying it's the items are very weak on tanks, I don't think it's fully true. Um, Alright, but they also have more percentages and stats than I do, so maybe potentially they see, oh, well, tank people that build tank items usually have lower win rates. I'm not sure. Um, Locket is nerfed by 5 armor and 5 medic resist, still a fine item. Um, burn damage per second down by 20. This is quite a big nerf, I would say. Um, Knight's Vow, 100 gold up. Uh, Knight's Vow is going to be fine. Um, Frozen Heart, up on 10 armor. Removed rock solid. Now only affects champions. So, what you're telling me is that the the entire idea with Warden Spain that we were talking about earlier, and that that one part is a buff, is that this is not even on Frozen Art anymore. Why would you build this item now? Is it only for the attack speed slow? Nah, this item is terrible. I'm not gonna lie. Frozen Art, terrible item. Why would you ever build... Uh, unless they're hard nerfing Brandwins and 4 mail. I don't see why you would ever buy this item now. Because this... Uh, I don't know, bro. Alright, let's keep reading, though. This seems like a huge nerf. Abyssal Mask. Abyssal Mask, at the moment, is... One of the most overtuned items in the game. This item is so P. It's insane. Um, yeah, like... Yeah, it's so good. It basically gives your entire team a free point staff, you know? Um, so... Cost is up by 150. Haste is up by 5. Magic is down by 5. All of this is fine for Abyssal Mask. Removed on make bonus Magic Resist. Removed. Yeah, this just means that you no longer steal the Magic Resist, but you still reduce the enemy. The fact that you can just... if you, Especially if you're playing a champion that like uses the Abyssal Mask yourself. I've seen people build this on Swain, for example. I built on Nidalee. Um... But even if you're just a tank, like Maokai or something, like just a random tank, or a support, this item is so stupid. Just giving every magic damage champion on your team a free void staff is so dumb. Um, yeah, this item is still really good. Trailblazer. Um, Monitor gold, sheeper, up health, movement speed. This is just a buff, to be honest. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, yeah. Iceborne gauntlet, up by 500, 400 gold. This is a lot. Don't get me wrong. Spellblade damage, 50% more AD. Um, this is also a lot. <laughs> so yeah, if you have 100 AD, you're going to deal 50, 50 more damage on your Sheen proc, which is a decent amount. Although you're not going to have 100 AD when you build the item, don't get me wrong. You're going to have, like, let's say, maybe 80. Um, but 40 damage is still a good amount. Good, good amount. Um, slow is just a higher... Flat value, but scales less. But this is good, I would say. Yeah, I would just... You'd make this item better early power spike without delivering huge slows late games. Yeah, I could see that, but... Okay, so you're gonna spike later. So one good thing right now with Iceborne Gauntlet compared to other items, especially in top lane, right? Because this is where you build item the most, if not only. Is that... You get this item way before the enemy gets their item. Which is insane. Right? Because it just means that you spike so much faster than they do. But this spike is harder. And it still comes slightly before um, 
other champions, right? Because if you look at like the bruiser items, right? Let's say you're playing as a bruiser, right? Um, or a tank for that matter. We're gonna see that soon. Um, where is the where are the bruiser items? So Triforce is gonna cost more. Um, Ravenous costs more. Um, what else do we have? Sunder Sky costs more if you want to build that. Cleaver costs more and is also really nerfed. Um, Eclipse costs the same. So Eclipse and Frostfire Gauntlet or Iceborne Gauntlet are going to be the fastest two spikes now in top lane, basically, right? But I think the Iceborne Gauntlet spike probably has more value than the Eclipse spike has, but I could be wrong on this, and it probably depends on the champions as well, of course, but we'll see. Um, but overall, this... I mean, it's an, I wouldn't say it's a buff, but it does mean that on one item and boots, compared to enemy one item and boots, you're going to be quite a lot stronger as a champion like Kisanta, let's say. Um, that builds this item a lot. Alright, Sapphire Aegis. Immolate damage is up by 5 flat, but less on bonus HP, so this is a buff for the early game. Um, minimum bonus damage is up. Monster bonus damage is up. Or, well, it actually exists now. Damage no longer ramps against champions or epic monsters. So it means... It means it buffs the wave clear, basically. Um, without actually buffing tanks massively in team fights, which makes sense. But it's still a good item in the early game. Foreign mail, this is a cheap item, isn't it? Holy. Um, yeah. Total cost is down by 250. That's really cheap for a tank item, for sure. Um, health is down by 200, which is a decent amount. Armor is though up by 10. And the foreign damage is up a... Yeah, it's up in the early game, right? If I'm not doing the math wrong. Um, no, actually it's down, isn't it? Yeah, you lose, what, 3 damage? On your bonus armor, because this would give you... Yeah, so you would get 8 damage from this that you lose. Um, overall though, this seems alright. Because... Compared to Frozen Heart, I would much rather build this now. It's cheaper, it gives you more stats, and it has a better passive. So I would just almost always build Frozen or Formel now or Frozen Heart. And I'm a Formel hater and I have been for a while, but this actually seems decent boss for the item. Hollow Radiance, uh, 50 health removed, same damage changes as to some Fire Ages, although for some reason they're not buffing the mini damage or. Like, you just have less minion bonus damage and less monster bonus damage than Sunfire, which I don't understand why that is. I guess it's because they feel like you have so much more wave clear with the passive, so they don't want to have it on the same. That could be it. I don't know. Um, Unending Despair is basically not touched at all. Um, I don't think Unending Despair is a good item. Um, I'll be honest, even though it's not getting nerfed i'm not sure you would buy it still unless you're playing maybe scion or shogaf or a champion that has a lot of hp and use the passive really well but you would buy buy this item later on then don't buy it early on um force of nature movement speed is quite a bit nerfed this item is not good at the moment um abyssal mask exists just build like, abyssal mask instead unless you want to build something like you can build spear visage or canic and they're both used better um spear visage um, total cost is down, health is down, and magic resist is down, although, I think this is fine for spare research. Like, it's quite a cheap item now, you build it mainly for the passive, right, when you're playing a healing champion, and especially if you're playing a healing champion that also has an enchanter on the team. For example, you have a Soraka bot lane, or a Sona, or a Senna, or whatever, to be honest, and you're playing like, let's say you're playing, uh, Mundo. You build this item, and you get insane healing, right? You play whatever else, right? A tank that just uses any sort of healing or has a lot of healing on his team. And this item can become really good. Now, is it better than Abyssal Mask? I'm not sure. Um, but yeah, this is overall pretty good for Spare Visage, I would say. Um, Kenny Crookern. Uh, health regen is down. This barely matters. Shield. Um, yeah, Kenny is fine. Deadman's Plate. Um... 50 up health, 10 more armor, movement speed is down, and the max movement speed from the passive is down. Yeah. The thing is with Deadman's Plate, that's a weird item, is that you kind of only build it for the passive and the movement speed on very certain champions like Volibear or Darius. Um, so I would say this is a nerf, even though it gives you more stats. Because you're still not going to buy it on other champions, and the champions that do want to buy Deadman's Plate are going to enjoy it less now. Um, Heart Seal Health Regen is, yeah, this still fine item. Or, I mean, Heart Seal is quite a terrible item right now, to be honest. Like, I'm not getting me wrong. 
But it's fine in certain games with certain champions, like Amundo, as for example, or Scion, it can be fine. Skarner, Jungle, it can be fine. Um, it's not going to be a worse item than it is right now. It's an alright item. Um, movement speed on Warmox is nerfed by 1%. This is fine. Like, yeah, it's fine. Um, considering they're removing movement speed from so many ADC items, etc., and it's more than they are removing from the tank items, it's, tanks are not going to care. Let's be honest. It's going to feel like they're getting buffed. Um, Yak show the protein um, health up by 50 armor and medic is down by 5 this is completely fine for the item yeah as I said I think tank items are the items that are getting touched the least for sure some items are not on here that I think are strong Randuins is a good example of that um, yeah I don't know I think tank items or tanks in general are going to be omega shilling I think tanks are going to be really strong um, Enchanter item, especially right because ADCs are getting nerfed, right? And ADCs getting nerfed means that every other class that is kind of tanky is going to get buffed because they're going to die slower, which means the tanks are, well, pretty happy. Alright, Enchanter items. Um, similar to ADCs and tanks, Enchanters are losing a chunk of their bonus movement speed effects. Okay, sure. Uh, movement speed on Shirelli is down by 4, ability haste on Echoes of Helia is down by... F or ability power rather is down by 5. The damage is on the passive is down by 10 on both of the or and the healing. Um yeah, it's still fine on the champion's ability. Moonstone is down by five. I don't wanna sit there for forever, to be honest. It's getting late, so uh, <laughs> that's why I'm trying to speedrun it a bit. Um and trying to tell you my opinions. Um four, 40, 50, 45 or a field shield for nearby ally, additional blah blah blah. Um uh, This is quite a big nerf. Um, for sure, because you lose basically this entire additional, if no nearby allies, right? Um, yeah, this seems quite bad for Moonstone, to be honest, but I'm not sure. Um, Imperial Mandate removed coordinated fire bonus movement speed. Sure, this item is still fine, I think. Ardent Sensor. Um, one on the gold list, ability power down by 5, heal and shield power up by 2, movement speed down, this item is still fine. Um, is that, I mean the thing is with enchanters as well, is that I feel like the enchanters themselves do not care nearly as much as the other classes about movement speed. I think movement speed is a really good stat, but if an enchanter gets into the position where they have to care about movement speed, I think they've either mispositioned already, or the fight is already over. One of those two things. So I feel like this is for sure. Because they could realistically an enchanter if they want to. Can you stand so far back. And just buff their ADC if they want to. Or buff whoever is standing in front of them. And they're chilling. They don't need to be interacting with the enemy flatly. Right? They can. Don't get me wrong. A lot of the time they will. But they shouldn't put themselves in danger. Um, in that sense. So I mean the movement speed on enchanters matters the least. Right? So they are in sense really fine. Staff flowing water, 50 gold less, ability power down by 5, healing shield power, it's the same thing basically, it's also a fine item. Um, healing shield power and redemption down by 5%, this is a decent amount actually. Um, I still think redemption is going to be a fine item, like in general, especially on champions, like a lot of tanks right now will build sh items like redemption as a third or fourth item, um, instead of building another tank item, because they're tanky enough already. And if you're doing that, then well, redemption is still gonna be omega fine. Um, Dawncore, th this is mainly nerf for enchanters, but enchanters have other options they could build. Um, Dawncore, um, price down by 200 gold, but ability part down by 45 when we remade, blah blah blah. I still think it should be a fine change. Um, because enchanter items you want to be cheap and you're not building it for the ability power. Um, but it's fine on enchanters like Ivan especially, or like Soraka, etc. That really just want the heal and shield power. Um, yeah. Alright, boots. So boots were changed uh, a while ago. Um, we expect the basic 300 gold boots to be bought every, early every game. We're, we're pricing the resulting upgrades, okay. Um, Berserker Greaves is down by 5% attack speed, so... Well, Berserker Greaves didn't get nerfed initially, I think. Um, so yeah, this is fine for them. And then you get Dagger Dagger, which in a sense is a nicer build path, right? Because it actually allows you to, like, if you have the slots open, you could build it, like, 
or like build these components now and not just sit them on a lot of gold. So that's nice. Um, price of lucidity boots goes down. Abilities goes down as well though. Overall, it's fine, I think, for lucidity boots, but it's not crazy good or anything, right? You're losing gold value, but it allows you to spike a bit earlier on champions that want lucidity boots. Merc treads up by 100 gold, well, tenacity becomes even rarer for some reason. Played steel caps is getting buffed, this is the dumbest shit I've seen in my life, to be honest. 2%, nah, I don't know, it doesn't make sense. It really just doesn't. Like, the fact that they're nerfing merc treads, I think, is because they feel like Merc treads are getting bought a lot and have high win rate while seal caps doesn't, for example. So they want to buff seal caps and nerf merc treads. But the entire reason why this is is because tenacity doesn't exist anymore because they removed it from the runes. So you need to build merc treads so many games, which I don't know. Honestly, I just think if they want this item to be solid again or like compared to this item, Bring back tenacity in runes. You don't have to have both unflinching and tenacity, or at least buff the like tenacity shard, for example. Whatever, right? Because right now, you just need mercs so many games if you're a melee champion. It's just unplayable otherwise, which is insane. All right, lethal tempo is back with a new rework. We removed the previous one because too much of its power budget was in pure attack speed, which made other sources of attack speed redundant. If th there other if their other thing it granted was a tunable effect, this would have been manageable, but at last attack range is not that. After gaming some time to readjust marksman items, we are bringing lethal tempo back, this time with an effect that synergizes with our, your other attack speed purchases. Attacking enemy champion grants a stack of lethal tempo for 6 seconds, up to 6 stacks. Each stack grants 5%. Attack speed for melees, 4% attack speed for range champions. At mass, max stacks, attacks also fire a note that deals 3 to or 9 to 30 damage for melees and 6 to 26 damage for ranged, increased by 1% per 1% bonus attack speed as bonus adaptive damage. Lethal Tempo now tracks how many of your attacks against champions are perfectly timed. Perfectly timed attacks launched within 0.25 seconds of when your attack is ready after previously attacking. So this is just a for fun stat or what? I, I assume so at least. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So the thing is with Lethal Tempo that's weird is that I heard this and I don't want to quote and I don't want to say I stand for it because <laughs> I'm not 100% certain. But I heard that someone did the math and it's supposedly just worse than press attack. Don't quote me on this. This is not my quote. That's what I heard. But for all I care, try it and see how it goes. Uh, yeah, I don't know what else to say about it. Presence of Mind is getting nerfed, amount of energy restore, uh, 1.5 to 11, 1.5 to 8.8. .8. Yeah, this is a decent amount. Um, it's still gonna be a fine rune, so why... Okay, so here's what you had before. You had Mana Flow, Cookies, and Presence of Mind. Cookies, you went for early lane phase. You went for a super early lane um, on champions that can't decide to use less mana. Mana Flow is... Post first reset kind of lane phase ish, where it starts becoming really good. Presence of mind is even later on into the game where it starts becoming really good, right? Um, yeah, presence of mind though is getting nerfed. Cookies, if you didn't know, are getting reworked. We're gonna look at that soon, uh, which probably means that mana flow is gonna be the best option, is what I would assume, but we'll see. Um, yeah, presence of mind is still gonna be a fine rune though on champions that don't need early mana but might need it later. Um, removed passive resistances when shielding um, okay so this is just down to zero okay that's fine uh, bonus health scaling so you deal more damage based on your bonus health and shield scaling you also deal more damage based off so you get more damage on the shield bash but less resistances this seems overall like a pretty good buff I would say um, yeah especially on champions that have big shields um, for example, maybe Scion could be quite good on. Skarner could be quite good on. Um, I mean, that was already good on Skarner, but yeah. Riven, potentially. Um, Yone, etc. Uh, Alright, so the basic delivery. Goodbye mana on this rune. Um, so now, instead, it heals 12% of your missing health, um, which is a decent amount, and it gives you um, maximum health on consumption. So, 
my thought process is that champions that need bursts of move or like health when they're low HP, this could be good though. Kled potentially could use this really well. Something like Renekton maybe could use this really well. It depends on what other runes they have in in that tree that they could use, right? Um, maybe you want to go for like Cosmic Insight, something like this, right? Um, that's going to be the main question, but it's something you could discuss, like explore on champions that don't need mana at all um, and care a lot about the HP instead of like something like Second Wind or if you're playing like um, a tank or like any champion, like let's say... Yeah, let's say the Renekton, I mean, Renekton is not the best option, but a tank that uses Resolve primary, um, but doesn't care about the mana that much, right? Like, uh, they don't use mana at all, potentially. Like, maybe Nardis could be good on, for example. Um, instead of running Taste of Blood secondary, when you go Grasp, you could run Biscuit Delivery if you want to. Um, could be an option. Alright, Nimbus Cloak. Um, Nimbus Cloak movement speed is up. Wait. So Nimbus Cloak is just massively buffed or what? Am I reading this wrong? We've changed Nimbus Cloak to feel puncher without being significantly more powerful by changing its flat movement speed into higher intensity decaying one. The overall distance traveled is about the same as before. I see. It would have been good if they included... Oh wait, it says decaying here. Okay, I'm stupid. Yeah, okay, that's my bad. Alright, yeah. I mean... It's nice if you want to initially, like, get on top of someone, especially, I mean, champions that use this rune, Darius, Garen, these kind of champions. If you use pop your summoner spell and run on someone, people are going to have a hard time reacting, so that could be quite nice for Nevis Cloak. Um, split free quality of life up this way, blah, blah, blah. Item shop and queuing. Um, basically, you can queue items now, and it will tell you how much gold you have left to it, etc. And this can be nice. Forgetting to buy items set for everyone, except for your lane opponents, spend that gold, so it gives you a purchase reminder. Um... Yeah, I mean, yeah, this is alright. Uh, tower plate or do, 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 do. to earn weight. Tower plate and take down gold is done. Done a simplification pass on the way to get tower plate and okay. Uh, to earn gold, you must damage it personally within the last ten seconds, not counting pets, and be within two thousand five hundred units. Yours okay. So this is what it was before. Or you're within 1200. So you're anything, you or anything you summon damage is within the last 10 seconds. Okay, so it's just if you have damaged it at all, even if you're not close. Okay, sure. Yeah, these are just quality of life changes. All right. Yeah, that's a patch. So basically, TLDR for those of you that went to the last part of the video, I'll try to keep this short. Um, tanks are pretty good. Pretty solid. Kisante changes are pretty big. It's going to take some time getting used to. But overall, I think Kisante is going to be fine. And potentially pretty good still. Um, Tristana is getting changed to be more of a bot laner. It's hard to see where this will go. But yeah, we'll see. Um, ADCs are getting quite nerfed. Mages are getting quite nerfed. Enchanters are going to be completely fine. If not, yeah, not even better than they are right now. Um, uh, Bruisers are a bit nerfed. Tanks are really good. Yeah. That's about it. All right. I will see you guys next time. Hope you all enjoyed it. Um, if you have any questions, because this was a long, long video, um, please leave it below. I don't care what it is. I'll try to answer everything. All right. And I'll see you guys. So, yeah. <laughs> see you.